8 Tech 6 is already a top tier engine. In the current generation, the engine already showcased state of the art rendering features and the graphics in the games which use it easily show off its power, but it also has blazingly fast performance. But last year, and with this most recent patch, Wolfenstein Youngblood is perhaps the best test of new technological features that we will see in the next generation consoles like the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. In this video, along with discussing the visuals and performance introduced in this patch with ray tracing and DLSS in Youngblood on PC, I will also discuss how these various next generation features interact with one another and how this reflects what we can perhaps expect on next generation console hardware. So let's suit up and drop in. As is to be expected, the ray trace reflections are the star of the show in this update for Young Blood. Much like Battlefield 5 or Control, the ray traced reflections that this adds into the game replace the game's use of cube maps and screen space reflections on nearly all game surfaces. And as I've described in the videos before covering ray tracing, reflections that are off screen can now be represented on screen dynamically in real time. Let's start small here. For example, with ray tracing off, if you look at this very shiny chrome metallic handrail, you can see that there's no real-time reflection in it. Rather, there's just a static image of a so-called cube map representing the reflection here. A cube map is just a static image of the game scene that is used for reflections. So in this scene here, as I move the camera, you can see how the reflection does not change its perspective even though the camera is moving. This is exactly what you see in miniaturized form here on the handrail. If you turn on ray tracing, you can see in comparison that the real-time reflection of the environment is now added into the image, to the point where you can even see the barrel of the player's gun reflected and swaying in the image as well. Small off-screen reflections like that are not the only things of course added in by using ray trace reflections. In Youngblood, many scenes have surfaces where the object lighting them does not align with the reflection. Like here, you can see this light lighting up the carpet and wall here, showcasing what I mean. If you look at the wall, you can see the reflection of what is called a rasterized light source. The reflection is small and circular, while the modeled object supposedly emitting that light is long and rectangular. This happens because in rasterization, many different techniques are used to drive reflections. For direct sources like this, where an object is emitting light, a lighting artist aligns a so-called point light inside the model. This is done for performance reasons, as the math to emulate a small light from a point is easier than doing it from a large surface area. Ray trace reflections will not change how the game is lit, but if you flick on ray tracing, you can see how it modifies that rasterized lighting by correcting its reflections. So here you can see the entire white shade on the lamp is now added over that point light to help fix that discontinuity. Beyond this, ray trace reflections can also represent material properties more realistically. In the standard id Tech 6, screen space reflections only apply to very reflective objects. This is done to maintain performance, so the game engine stops SSR from applying to objects where it should technically have them, on rougher surfaces. A good example here is on this marble surface here. Here, the only reflections on the surface are rasterized lights in the scene and a basic cube map. If you turn on ray tracing, you can see it adds in subtle and soft reflections onto that marble. Along with only limiting screen space reflections to ultra-reflective surfaces, the original version of the engine keeps those reflections uniformly sharp or diffuse depending upon the surface type. See, in real life, the Fresnel effect makes it so that reflections less than perfect mirrors showcase contact hardening in the reflection depending upon the viewing angle. So where the contact point of the reflection is, is very sharp. But as the reflection continues on, it tapers off and darkens. The original version of screen space reflections cannot represent that effect at all, which you can see here well in this scene on the reflection on the metal here under the table, which stays perfectly sharp. If you look at the difference between that same surface with ray tracing on versus off, you can see that the ray tracing version has the reflection realistically sharpened at the place of contact. Then it becomes more diffuse and darker as it continues on. The last greatest strength that ray tracing adds over the original version of the game is how it handles transparent surfaces. Before, transparent surfaces had low-res cube maps applied to them to show off-screen reflections. 
like here in the lounge where you can see how dramatically low resolution and awkward cube map reflections can look. If you turn on ray tracing, you can see that the reflection is replaced by a real-time one where straight lines are now distorted in a perspective correct manner and you can even see your own player model in them. This is very interesting in this game since it uses a merged first and third person model for your single player character. So your reflections perfectly line up with your actions, like here in this glass where you can see your ultra sharp reflection of the character in the glass moving, reloading and changing magazines in one to one with what you can see from your perspective. Of course that reflection does not need to only be completely sharp as it varies based upon the material type, like here this metal wall in this scene, as I approach the wall, you can see the darkened reflection of my character model slowly resolving into view, but it stays rather diffuse even as I'm close, as the wall is not a perfect reflector as transparent glasses or some other polished material. One of my favorite self-reflections I saw was in a dirty old mirror in the catacombs, where the sharpness of the reflection in the mirror are different depending upon how dirty it is. Darn, doesn't that just look awesome? So the game now has more accurate reflections in many scenes, with them creating subtle or stark differences depending upon the material and the angle at which you view them. But not everything's always perfect. For example, I notice how transparent reflections on water are still covered by screen space reflections and do not use ray tracing. It's a bit of a shame, but so it goes. Also, occasionally in some rare lighting conditions, the ray traced reflections seem to be overly bright. Like here in this room, you can see this object here is rather dark and in shadow, yet its reflection is uniformly brightly shaded. I'm not sure what causes this exactly. The ray trace reflections will not be able to represent screen space ambient occlusion, but it seems like some lighting pass is not being passed occasionally to the ray tracing so it can represent it. Perhaps some form of baked lighting not represented in the ray tracing. And lastly, you can sometimes see objects pop in and out of the ray trace reflections based upon the camera position. Like here, as the camera goes forward, you can see one-off small reflections popping in, like this lantern here as I move back and forth. Or in this scene, as I strafe along the wall, you can see reflections on the edge of the screen popping in on a per-mesh basis, looking a little bit awkward. On average though, the reflections are awesome and look great, but how do they perform? Much like Battlefield 5 before this, the ray trace reflections here reduce performance by about 50% looking at the in-game benchmark. You can see that an RTX 2080 Ti is reduced from more than 100 FPS at 4K to the 50s and 60s at 4K with ray tracing on. The game itself though is heavier on average than the benchmark shows. As you engage in combat in-game, it causes more strain on the GPU as particle effects fly and transparency comes closer to the screen. Here, depending upon what happens, the FPS can be in the mid 50s, the low 60s, and at its rarest around 48 or 49 FPS. Normally this would be cause for concern, but the context is important. We are looking at the game completely maxed out with ray tracing at 4K, and it's just a bit under 60 FPS when a lot is happening on screen. That's actually pretty amazing. Mid-range ray tracing GPUs manage correspondingly similar at 1440p. The RTX 2060 Super at 1440p with ray tracing on found itself hovering right around the 60fps line in combat here in the Little Berlin level, where it spent a lot of the time just north of 60fps, going down into the mid-50s at worst when an explosion would happen very close to the camera. Here though, if you're playing on a GPU with 8GB of VRAM or less like the RTX 2060 Super, you'll have to decrease the image streaming setting in the option to Ultra von Uber, as the Uber setting uses more than 8GB of VRAM. It really does not affect the texture quality as I see it, just the chance of texture pop-in occurring. If you don't turn this down, the game will show you a warning, and in general your FPS will be cut down by more than a third. The RTX 2070 Super performs expectedly better at 1440p with those exact same settings. Here it spends much of that same fight in the square area in the 70s or the 80s with the worst explosions close to the screen, bringing down the FPS to the high 60s. So really excellent performance for both of these cards at 60 FPS. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, alongside RT, id Tech here has access to other next generation features like variable rate shading, 
With ray tracing set to off, the RTX 2070 Super gains around an average of 7% more FPS at 1440p while utilizing variable rate shading set to the performance mode. So it does have great potential to aid FPS for little to no significant degradation in image quality. Yet with ray tracing set to on, that performance uptick from VRS is not as significant. Running that benchmark again with ray tracing on, you can see how the average frame rate increases by just over 4% throughout the course of the demo. So it is useful, but not dramatic enough to reliably offset the heavy hit that ray tracing incurs. What does dramatically aid in performance though, is image reconstruction in this game through DLSS, which ships with three modes, performance mode, balanced mode, and quality mode. At first I had a really hard time pixel counting DLSS in this game, but based on a few very rapid moving screens, I could determine that the performance mode for DLSS uses a 50% resolution scale on each axis, so 4K with DLSS would internally be 1080p. Balance mode is a 57% scale on each axis, which would make 4K DLSS on balance mode internally near 1230p. And quality mode is a 66% scale on each axis, where 4K with DLSS in this mode would be around 1420p internally. In terms of quality here of the reconstruction, DLSS in this title is very impressive. For example, look at these three images here, zoomed in at 400%. On the left we have 4K DLSS in performance mode. In the middle we have native 4K and on the right we have 4K DLSS in quality mode. In stills, the qualitative difference between a native resolution and the various DLSS modes is ever so slight. In fact, if you look at some of the grading on the floor here, you can see that the DLSS versions complete lines on the grading better than native 4K with TAA, especially in the quality mode. And if you look at that radar monitor above the soldier, you can see that DLSS reconstructs the circle there in it at an even higher quality than native 4K. Considering these are much lower resolution internally, that's a very impressive feat. And it offers vastly superior image quality to native resolution at the same internal scale. Here's that same scene with a 400% zoom with an internal resolution modifier of 0.50 next to DLSS in performance mode, which is then next to the game running at a native 1080p. Here we see an interesting spread of image quality and performance in spite of the fact that they're all running internally at the same resolution. DLSS has the best image quality in the still, while the in-game scaler looks less crisp but also runs slower. Here I imagine the in-game scaler is slower because the upscale and native resolution post-processing it does is more expensive than DLSS's runtime. Then on the far right, the native 1080p image runs the best of course, but looks worse than both. As I see it, if you are running ray tracing this game, then there is no reason to not run it with DLSS on. It looks appreciably similar to native resolution as I have shown. And as the benchmark shows, it is 70% faster in performance mode or 38% faster in quality mode. With DLSS in use, there's nothing really preventing something like an RTX 2060 Super from playing the game at a reconstructed 4K with DLSS on if you use the performance or balance mode. Like here, I'm playing it with performance mode on and it's running above 60 FPS in that same fight earlier with much higher image quality. In the end here, we're looking at a very intriguing situation with Wolfenstein young blood. Ray trace reflections are indeed expensive, but the game has such a high baseline of performance already that their performance hit relative to other titles is much lessened. The fact that an RTX 2060 Super at native 1440p is just a bit under 60 FPS is mega impressive, and that's all at basically the highest settings. We also learned some lessons here regarding what we could perhaps expect for the next generation of consoles. Here variable rate shading has a small positive effect on performance that is not enough to offset the increased load from ray tracing, but it is still appreciated. Rather, DLSS here with its great quality has shown us that image reconstruction like checkerboard rendering or other techniques are the best way to help offset the cost of ray tracing while keeping image quality high. Based upon what I am seeing here in this game, I would say that those games utilizing ray tracing in next gen consoles would be making a great error if they did also not utilize image reconstruction. But that is it for now. If you did like this video, 
hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then please consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to me about ray tracing or DLSS in this game, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.